I was in Long Island with my eighth grade graduating class. And the highlight of our graduation was our trip to Washington, D.C. Going to the nation's capital at 13 years old. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> I was there excited about going. 99 white kids and me. <laughs> <laughs> what a whole lot of black going on in Long Island right there. <laughs> but I didn't feel different. I felt like one of them. We went to Washington, D.C., and it was exciting. We took the train. We got off the train at Union Station. Went to our hotel, and we had our balloons. We filled them with water and tossed them out the window. <laughs> we had no idea about the danger involved. We were 13, come on. And we were excited about going to see all of the historical monuments. And we traveled every day on a marvelous itinerary touring the great sites of Washington, D.C., the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, and of course the Smithsonian. And oh my, being able to run up the steps of the Washington Monument. I had a heart condition. What was I thinking? But I did it, as a brave 13-year-old would do, all the way up to the top and looked out over the great city that represents freedom in America, the city that was our nation's and is our nation's capital. The highlight of our trip was to be our trip not to Congress, not to meet some of the statesmen, Congress or congressional leaders, senators and representatives, but not to go to the Lincoln Memorial, although as the only black representative, I really wanted to go. <laughs> but the highlight was to go to Glen Echo Amusement Park, where we could ride the roller coasters. Come on. 13. What do you want? We were excited about going to an amusement park. Friday, the last day of our trip, we were all revved up. And at lunch, in a room not unlike this, I was singled out by one of the chaperones and called over. And she sat me down and she said, Clifton, do you, have you ever heard of the Mason-Dixon line? The Mason-Dixon line. I said, yes, I believe so. Scared it was a test. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Oh, smarty pants, Clifton said, well, I believe it was the line of demarcation between the North and the South when the decision was being made whether to secede from the Union. <laughs> yeah, I used to talk like that in school. I was a real twerp. She said, you're absolutely right, Clifton. She said, well, Glen Echo Amusement Park is across the Mason-Dixon line. It's 1959, and she said to me, they do not allow Negroes in the park. You will not be allowed to go with the rest of your class. I was so dumbfounded and hurt and embarrassed. I stood up in tears and ran up to the room. A few minutes later, a young man named Frank Miller, my roommate, quite white, <laughs> wasn't in the room. Hey, Clifton, what's the matter? Huh? What's going on? Somebody, somebody hurt you? What's up? I said, man, I, nobody hurt me. I just, I can't go to the amusement park, man. I can't ride the roller coasters because I'm, I'm a colored boy. He said, what? what kind of crazy stuff is that? What are they talking about? We just went to Coney Island together, and I walked it. <laughs> I didn't know until a little later that Frank Miller was Jewish. 
He said, Cliff, if you can't go, I'm not going. I'll stay here with you. We'll watch television. A couple minutes later, our Italian neighbor came up, Joel. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey, 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 you crying, man. What's up? What's up? You want me to take somebody out? You want me to hurt somebody? Somebody <laughs> messing with us, we're from New York. <laughs> no, Joey, no, Joey, it's cool. <laughs> no, man, they won't let me go to the amusement park because I'm Negro. Man, that's crazy. I never heard of nothing like that. <laughs> if you can't go, I'm not going. Within 30 minutes, one black guy and 12 white disciples were in that room. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>